All right, everybody, welcome to this week's dissecting design, and we got a good one. This is Disgaea, or otherwise known as the game that you can never really finish. Developed by Nippon Ichi, I'm looking at the PC version of it, and we're going to talk about the multi system design and, quite frankly, the rapid hole of mechanics and systems that. Pretty much you can play this each one of the Skia games for easily 300 hours plus. And that is not hyperbole here. Now with the Skia 1, this was a very important game for Nipponichi. The first game was originally published by Atlas, and due to the popularity of it over here, this kind of gave uh, Nipponichi the motivation and the impetus to open up a United States branch, or Nice America. And Nice has been the uh, publishing or the uh, cross-porting company for a while. I should say translating. There you go. That's better. And they have been putting out pretty much all the major games from Nipponichi over the last few years. Now that said, though, they have experimented with other strategy RPGs, including Phantom Brave, um, La Purcell Tactics was the first one, and Makai Kingdom. But the Skia has kind of become their bread and butter. And we're going to be switching between this one and possibly the Skia 2 to take a look at how the systems have evolved. But even then, we're not going to be able to look at everything, especially the late game craziness. But let's jump in game and we're going to look at basically a quick battle just to go over the combat system. All right. Welcome back. Let me get the mouse pointer out of the way here. So, the combat system of the Skia series hasn't really changed in terms of its base foundation over the years. It has, of course, added in more subsystems and just general craziness. The idea, of course, beat every enemy in the level. These points here are geopanels, and basically, whatever marker or symbol you put on top, will cause an effect on the corresponding color. Now my class of characters here are already super powerful. So this will not be difficult at all. Characters can move and attack, but once you attack that locks you in for that turn. My character... Now, here's one thing to keep in mind, which we'll talk about in a few minutes. That character right there, Natalie, is level 221, but that's actually a lie. And we'll explain what that means in a few minutes. But yeah, if anyone actually dies here, then something has gone dreadfully wrong. In fact, one of my characters could pretty much literally kill everything in this level by themselves. You can have characters team up if they are next to each other, like so. If I move them um, like this, and then if I attack with him, she may join in on the attack. Like that. Let's watch what happens here. None of them are going to be doing any damage. <laughs> the bonus gauge at the bottom right grows based on team attacks, as well as destroying the Geo Panels. And what happens is, for each rank you go up, you get a reward. And the reward list is randomized each time you play. Advanced play evolves around, or revolves around, I should say, going for a maximum bonus list to get the absolute best gear. Was there one more person left? Enemies and characters also have resistances to different elemental effects, as you can see down there. So typically you want to have different mages. Or, if you're crazy like me, you can create one mage that has every spell under the sun. 
And how you do that, we'll come back to as well once we move on to the next section. That was akin to shooting fish in a barrel right there. Now, characters in turn before we move on to the next section, each class itself comes with different abilities, and this is a very important part. And in fact, I think we're gonna move on. That will probably be better, so we'll focus on characters and growing, because that's pretty much the heart of the Skaya and the series in a whole. The combat that we saw, quite frankly, doesn't really mean much. For anyone who's played the, any of the Skaya games to the high level, you know that actually playing the game like that is kind of secondary to the real heart of the matter, and that is growing impossibly stupidly powerful. But we'll talk about how you do that next. Alright, it's time to talk about the heart of the Skaya series, and that is growing in power. My friend here, Vijo, will be the example, and if you're a fan of Japanese-style games, you should know where that reference comes from. So, we're going to start from right to left, and work our way through. So, the first thing is the aptitude, and the aptitude basically represents the bonuses, or the growth of the stats, each time a character levels up. And the aptitude is dependent on the class itself, with higher bonuses based on the class's specializations. So something like a mage is going to get more towards intelligence, something like a gunner will get more towards hit, shogun for attack, and so on. This is a very important part about power leveling characters, and what we'll get to in a minute. In the middle is the Weapon Mastery, and this is locked to the classes themselves, and represents what weapons they are best suited for. And you can see it goes from E to S. And the higher the grade, the easier it is for that character to learn skills rel uh, related to that weapon. Each weapon has its own set of skills that can be learned. As you can see, we have some sword skills here gun, and so on. As skills, the more you use a skill, the more it will level up, which will enhance its range for spells, and it's just general potency as well. It also will allow it to be transferred over when characters transmigrate, but we'll come back to that in a minute as well. Get back to V. Joe. And then on the left we have the stats, and this is a very big deal, because levels in Disgaea mean nothing. It is all about the stat value, as you can see, or the numbers in the left. So V. Joe right there, it says he's level 91, but that is a complete lie. He is not level 91 in terms of those stats. He is probably closer to level 700, 800, maybe even more at this point. And the key to that is how we start power leveling and powering up characters. Come over here. The Dark Assembly is basically the game's way of allowing you to influence the game and characters. You can make gear more expensive and stuff like that. But the real point of this is to transmigrate. So, what happens is as characters kill enemies, they gain mana. And mana can be used to take a character and change them to another class. Now, at the low points, or the low way of playing it, you can just simply make a character and take them up the same line, making them stronger. Or you can go even crazier and take a character who's learned skills, like let's say a cleric, and transfer them to another class, maybe one that's more about combat, and then you'll have a fighter who can also heal. So, someone else would be good with res. You could even take a healer and turn him into a mage, so that way you always have one character who does it all, and so on. But, when you transmigrate, what happens is a character will go back to one, but the higher the class, or the higher you spend the mana, the more of their stats will be inherited. Well, of course, it's going to raise those costs up, and you'll get more ability points, which will allow you to star him up even higher. 
Now, the inheritance rate is very important because the higher or the more you inherit, the higher the base stats are going to be. So what happens is if I inherit at level, let's say, 500 to start with, and I have a 95% inheritance, then I am inheriting 495, I hope I did the math right in my head there, 495 levels worth of stats. But I'm going back to level 1. So if when I take this character who's level 1 and I kill someone, I'm going to start leveling up. But my stats are going to grow based on what they're that 495 levels. And because of the aptitude bonus boosting it based on the values there, that means that the second I hit level 2 after reincarnating or transmigrating, I'm going to see an insane power creep or power increase, and so on and so forth. And then once I'm ready to do it again, we send them back to level 1, we repeat the process. And each time you do that, basically the level becomes more and more of a lie. And as we keep going up like this, this is required for the game's many endgame challenges. So, come over here for one more second here. So as you can see, I have, in, I have transmigrated eight times. So really, at level 91, he is probably closer to level 1000 right now in terms of power. Now, while this is more than above and beyond for the normal game, We'll talk more about what this kind of challenge entails in a later section. Now, with that said, I'm trying to think if there's anything else in terms of characters. As you play, you'll unlock new classes and new characters that you can switch over to, including bonus ones for basically leveling up everyone. So it's generally good to level up at least one of each to really get a chance to unlock everybody. Of course, the male and female variants have different stats as well, but it all ends up in the wash. Also take note that the weapon proficiencies at the top also go up as you rise in rank. Now we'll talk more about the classes and what makes them so interesting as well later on when we switch over to Disgaea 2. But let's move on to the next rabbit hole, and that is the items, and how things will get even crazier there. Welcome back. It's time to talk about the other way characters become stupidly powerful, and that's items. And the rabbit hole of items and the power that goes in them, man, we could easily spend who knows how many hours going through all of it. But Items in the Skea series, of course, are designed around boosting different stats, different equipment slots, and so on. Now, if you notice, as I am scrolling down, items are will sometimes be flashing a different color. That basically represents either a normal item or common, a rare, or a legendary. Now, this item, the Testament, is one of the super high, ridiculously powerful items in the game. And we can put this basically on anyone to get a massive increase in their stats. Now you're probably wondering why the testament up there is higher than this testament that's on Natalie, or on Harrison. And that's because of the fact that you can go into items and explore them in order to boost their stats. Now, these characters, or those things on the right, the manager, master, and so on, are residents. And each type of resident will boost an item in a different way. Broker gives more money. Manager gives you a mana boost. And let me see if we've got anything else. Statistician increases experience, I believe. Hypnotist gives you a chance of putting an enemy to sleep. And in order to raise these powers, I'll get or to raise a residence, you need to go into items that have them and beat them, and then you can move them and combine them into other items to make things even more and more and more powerful. 
ion shop. You can also, in back of the assembly, increase the quality of the items. But you're gonna love this next part. The residents that can appear on item are mostly randomly picked. Some items have a greater chance of spawning a specific type of enemy. Or residents, I should say. But typically, you're going to exit and come back in to see the changes. And there are entire strategies dedicated to getting the right statisticians, or I'm sorry, the right residents, and just ridiculously combining and merging them to create super residents that you can then put on your items and make them even more powerful. Now the quality of the weapon or the gear also determines how many levels you'll find in the item world and what we will talk about next. But when you combine the characters with upgrading weapons and gear like this, it can get insane in terms of the power levels and again the stat values there as you can see as we keep going down the list. But we're going to quickly enter an item world and we'll talk a little bit more about the beyond normal game epic grinding right now. Alright, welcome to the Iam world, where the Skia series insane levels of power begin and end. Every item in the game will have a randomly generated series of levels. The quality of the item will determine what the starting level of the enemies are at, and this will also impact the rewards that you'll get for going into them. So, going to a level 307 item is going to be a little bit crazy. So it's probably going to a level 200. But, let me just show you, just for the hell of it. Also, to escape one of these, you need a Mr. Gensi's exit, so it's important to carry those as well. So, we're in the item world now, and again, this is all randomly generated. Enemies are going to be pretty powerful. Now remember, my characters are not at their normal levels, so things can get even crazier. Now, let me see what we can find here. And if you look at the bonus gauge, you can see some pretty crazy boosts here. And the game can spawn levels where you literally cannot kill every enemy. So the idea is we need to escape. By clearing the floor, we'll boost it higher. Now one of the reasons why I keep these scouts here is that they can geo-change, or change everything on the floor to try and give us a better roll. Now this is the resin. If we kill him, we then unlock him so we can move him to other items. They will attack enemies, or try to. But generally speaking, you want to kill him. So let's see what happens. And we got a goose egg. Well, that's not good. Let's leave the floor. You can normally leave an item world every 10 floors. Alright, so what do we have here? Ooh, this is actually going to be a really good one, I think. We have red, blue, green, and the clear. Alright, this is going to be actually great, because we can go over how the geo system works. Make sure they're all here. Perfect. So first off, I'm going to send out our friend. Uh, we'll send out V Joe. Now I gotta be careful. Enemy boost times three is going to uh, triple their stats. So I'm going to just end the turn right here. Enemy AI is very basic in the Skia series. There. Goodbye. Oof. He 
these guys aren't gonna die that easily, it looks like. Uh, let's see. Mm. Stubborn, aren't they? There we go. Alright, so now we can get back to the fun of using these geo panels. Like I said, you'll, the bonus meter over there will grow based on how much you can either get combos or clear with the geo panel system. And here's how it works. When you destroy a geo symbol, it will change all the panels onto that same color to the color of the symbol itself. And there's another one, there's another geo symbol on there. Well, then it will change as well. And it'll keep going back and forth, back and forth, until there are no more colors to change. So, where is yellow? Good. Sometimes you have to rotate. So, what we're going to do is set up a massive boost. And to do that, the simplest way is to get all the panels on the one color that you do not have in terms of the geo symbol. Now when you destroy them, they're going to go in order of the closest to the farthest. So I'm going to move the clear one, or the null, as far away. Because that's the last one that I want to hit. You can't do this on every level, especially due to things being randomly placed. So when you get the opportunity, you certainly want to do this. So I'm going to do some fancy throwing. Now I need to make sure... Oh yeah, this is going to be really good. So the idea is I want to take the lowest level characters that I want to power up. And we're just going to place them on clear squares, and you'll see why in a minute. It can be a little hard to see sometimes. Yep, we have two of them. One was transmigrated. Move her over here. All that's left. Oh, oh. Let's get yellow onto a purple. And that's good. Enemies will not activate unless they can get to you. So let me move them over here. In order to save, actually, you know what, in order to save time, since we're not going to be going through this whole thing, let's just pop this off now. Normally, I would move everyone into the place, get them onto clear squares, and then detonate. But again, we'll be here for a very long time. And that's kind of one of the major parts of the Disgaea series. If you get into this, you'll be here for a who knows how many hours. Alright. So everything is on purple. Let's light this candle. Okay, let's try that again. Again, we're dealing with things that are a few hundred levels above what our characters normally are. So one more. And... <laughs> All right, one more time. I'm trying to resist the urge to power level, and it's very hard. Alright, here we go. So now watch. Anything that is on a colored square 
will take damage. And the damage is relative to the chain hit. So now blue becomes red. Then I think red becomes green, green becomes yellow, and then yellow becomes null. Let's see. And again. Basically, if you do this option, if you can get up to about seven to 800 in terms of a chain hit, you're good for the full level here. So we're going to hit 10 like it's nobody's business. So if you won't go grab a drink. <laughs> we'll be right back here. Now, if you're really good at the Scare series, you can set up multi chains in terms of having geo panels on different ones. But this is generally the easiest and safest way to do it. Oh yeah, we got the bonus for sure now. We really only need to hit about like 900 to 1000, so this is overkill at this point. Do, 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 do. So how's everyone's day doing? Almost there. And then for clearing the whole board, you get one final nuke that kills any remaining enemies or just does massive damage. In the later games, they let you speed through the bonus gauge, so unfortunately you just have to wait another minute. There we go. And now, as you can see, we get all that lovely rewards, including bonus experience and the items. So on the last level, when, it's, when you saw the Testament, I would have seriously wanted to try to get the Testament as a free super item. Sometimes you'll end up on a floor where there will be a guard that you'll need to kill or move off in order to advance. But again, because this is a high up dungeon or high up item level, we're getting some really good drops. Now we're on level 13 right now. Again, note the enemies are growing insanely high in power. And yes, when you're in the, these dungeons, you can spend hours going through them. Get different modifiers. So here's one we would have to knock this guy off. Mm, some really good stuff. But again, if I start playing this, we will be here for probably an hour or two. So with that said, I hate to quit and lose our progress, but them's the breaks. Let's head back to the menu. But every item in Diskea has a dungeon. And yes, if you really want to spend the time, you can go into all the items you want, get all the residents to farm, power them up, then go into the items you want to equip, go as far up into the item worlds as you can, level them up, and then of course transmigrate your characters, level them up, and then at some point in, you know, 40 years, you'll have characters that are just insanely powerful. And in fact, one of the hallmarks of late game or master level play in the Sky series is about creating a character who can do 1 million points of damage. And no, that's not a joke. There are strategies and just massive guides relating to the exact items, the exact stats, and the exact characters to do all that. Now, we are, now this video is going to be on the short end, but I just want to show you one thing before we move on to the next section. My playtime right now is about 58 hours long. That is, that may sound like a lot to you, but that is still very low in terms of the late game play. Now, we've gone over essentially the foundation of the Disgaea series. The item world, transmigrating, power leveling, and so on. And that foundation stays between the scale 1 to currently the scale 5. But each game adds additional twists to the genre or to the design to make things a little bit more interesting and, of course, add who knows how many more hours of play. 
So we're going to switch over now, and you're going to see a jump in quality in a second. Alright, so here we are in the Skea 2. And yes, before anyone says it, this is a different game. So, with the Disgaea series as a whole, again, the foundation doesn't really change all that much. The same basic systems are intact, including, of course, the Dark Assembly. Things have been altered, of course, there's now a little bit more voting and control on that front. But again, you're going to still use it for transmigrating and for advanced features. But the real change that Disgaea 2 offers is twofold. First off, we have the felony system. If you look at the characters down there, as you complete certain in-game um, opportunities and challenges, you will unlock felonies, and these will allow you to basically go into a felony, which is similar to an item world, and get a mark, which in this game, basically crime is good. So getting felonies will actually raise your base, I believe it's either raise your base stats or your experience bonuses. And so the more you have, the better that character is, and these are persistent across transmigrations as well. So the idea is that you get a bunch of these as quickly as possible and it will just make characters a lot easier to power up. Now the second big change, and one that I really do like and what they decided going forward, is now every class in the game, including the male and female variants, will get a unique bonus associated to them. So the female mage uses less special or SP for skills, the male mages gain their skills quicker. A male ninja dodges up when in danger, while the female ninja gets a attack times too. And I'm still very early. Again, when we're talking the Skia series, 10-15 hours is like nothing <laughs> to these games. But I really do like how the different classes now have a bit more personality in terms of the tactics that you can use to level them up and use them. Even the monsters get special abilities. They also add in new items, which we come over here. Again, I named some of these characters. You can tell which characters I've named, because they'll usually have some kind of weird name to them. But, if you look over here, you now have weights, which will, on purpose, lower a character's health, so you can trigger their special ability. Again, the residents are back, if you look at the bottom right of the screen. Treasure maps are an additional item that you can now have pirates who will invade item more. And getting the maps will provide special bonuses. <laughs> the chicken pirates. And getting them all is required for, if you're going to get ready for this, there is an item world within the item world that you can go to. In fact, there is the dark world of the game. Which, if I remember right, she is around here somewhere. Where are you? There she is. If we go in there right now, we will basically die. But every level in the game now has a Dark World variation, which is extra hard, may have unique rules to it. And it's just designed for that, again, that, ever, that extra special power leveling that this guy's series is known for. Again, shops are here, different items. Now, with the Disguise series, one thing that I do appreciate is that this, the design as a whole really reminds me of the clicker and idle genre. I know that may sound weird, but the reason is that both series are about you optimizing your play as best as you can and figuring out how to exploit things for maximum benefit. In the Disguise series, obviously there's more interaction, but the basic rules apply. When you start out, things will be very slow, and then once you start getting into things, making enemies harder, 
using the various systems to your advantage, the game starts, you tend to start to blow away the basic challenge of the game. And we'll come back to that in our final section, talking about the Disgaea series. But just like the idle games, if you just play things basically, it's going to take you much longer. But once you start getting into the power leveling and the grinding that's involved, things tend to speed up. And the same goes for Disgaea. And with each new series, or each new game in the series, they add in more and more of these subsystems. Um, I, unfortunately, I don't remember Disgaea 3 off the top of my head, and I did not play 4 and 5 yet. But I have seen footage, and they do have more systems there. But again, all of them is... All the systems are designed essentially to circumvent the basic gameplay. I can... You can play Disgaea as a typical SRPG. Keeping in time to the levels, beating them one at a time, and going like that. Or you can just absolutely crush things. Use felony systems to boost MP or boost your mon experience. Use transmigration to get the characters that you really want powered up. And just going crazy like that. And either way, you are rewarded. If you want to again play the game normally, you can do that. If you want to go crazy and go for the enemies in the thousands in terms of experience, that is certainly an option. But unfortunately, this kind of design does present a very big problem that the Sky series has, and again, very similar to the idle genre, which we'll talk about next, and that will take us to the final part of our topic here. Alright, so we're going to wrap things up talking about kind of my main issue with this Gaia series. As I said in the last part, this Gaia really reminds me of the idle genre, and how it's really designed around you kind of solving the puzzle of optimization as opposed to playing the game. And because of that, the Gaia series is full of breadth, but not depth. The whole strategy RPG layer of trying to figure out the best ways to win battles, uh, outsmart your opponents, is completely and utterly overshadowed by the fact that you're trying to basically create characters of absolute destruction. And as I've said in previous videos, you kind of throw strategy out the window if your character can do just, you know, 500,000 points of damage like it's nothing. And the first time I played Disgaea, I got so frustrated because I was not using those extra systems that I just stopped playing the game. It just felt too much of a grind. And that's kind of the point. Once you start exploiting and figuring out these systems, basically, Disgaea's gameplay as a whole disappears. You enter, you know, the unlimited machine of grinding and getting more and more power. As you saw earlier in this video, I'm about 56, I think, 56, 58 hours into the first Iskaya, and again, that is very much lightweight compared to the people who have spent hundreds of hours optimizing characters, getting the resins to the max level, and entering those item worlds that can have at least, I think, 100 to 200 levels and beating them all. And, but that is kind of the beauty of the series, is that you can you really get as much as you put into it. If you don't want to use those systems, you're not being forced to if you want to complete the main game. But they're there if you want to dive in, and again, see just how all these different layers intersect and interact with each other. I know a few of you watching this, including my fa my longtime fans here, have played previous Disgaea games. And again, I've heard different things from them. Some people, again, absolutely love the series. Others, again, tend to just get exhausted playing them. And like I said earlier, even though we've been talking about Disgaea, there's still Phantom Brave, Makai Kingdom, which, yes, they are strategy RPGs, but they have completely different rule sets and systems. And if we were to explore it all, this dissecting design would probably be at least three to five hours long at minimum. Especially when we start comparing and contrasting. As a quick example, in, uh, I think it's Phantom Brave is the one that does this. In the Phantom Brave series, the character stats themselves 
are not as important as the items. And it's all about creating ultimate items that you can, and you're gonna love this part, characters possess items and gain the properties of said item. And yes, it gets even more and more crazier than that. But again, Phantom Brave and Makai Kingdom never really took off as much compared to the Skaya. And like I said, we are up to five, and I'm sure they are working on a sixth one in the future. But, like I said, if you like to analyze games that are very system heavy, or just really allow for just like multiple, multiple ways of just tearing them apart, definitely check out the Skaya. Again, with each one adding more and more elements to the design, pretty much the later ones will offer more to examine compared to the older ones. But each game is still at least a few hundred hours if you really want to get into them, so you'll get your money's worth no matter what. And if they ever decide to port over the later ones, I will certainly be streaming and making videos of them, or maybe if I get them for the PS4. Uh, but again, we'll, <laughs> it won't exactly be a 20 minute video. But we're going to wrap up the Sweet Slice Second Design here. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to pitch a game for me to look at next for the series, let me know in the comments below. If you're new, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Check back for daily discussions on game design here and on GameWisdom.com where we examine the art and science of games with dissecting design pieces going up usually most Mondays. Once again, I am Josh Beiser. Thanks for watching. And we got through this before hitting five out before hitting a hundred hours. So I think we can call this video a success. So have a great day and see you all next time. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. And come back around 10 Eastern for regular streaming. For a collection of my writings, as well as weekly podcasts on game development, be sure to check out game-wisdom.com. Follow me on Twitter at GWBicer for updates throughout the day. And to help support everything that I do, you can find me on Patreon under GWBicer or Game Wisdom. Your donations can help to keep things running, and when you hit some goals, it will be more content for everyone to enjoy. So, thanks again for watching, and be sure to come back for daily discussions on game design on the Game Wisdom channel.